You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New Jersey After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New Jersey After Show. Ooh, we got the theme song here. It's legitimate now. <laughs> All right, guys. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another episode of your favorite Housewives, Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 5, Episode 10, Best Friends. Frenemies. And I'm your host, Erica Garcia Ross. And joining us this week is a new face. And a new voice, and too. And a new voice, <laughs> yes. Grant Rudder. Hello, everyone. Hello. And <laughs> Deanna is sick tonight, but she will be back next week. And uh, Grant's going to be joining us. Yes. From here oh, on out. I'm really excited. Yeah. I've watched, like, I mentioned to you earlier, and I'll mention now that I've watched every episode of this. Um, and I've had moments where I was like falling out a little bit, and I was like, <laughs> you know, all right, I'm like kind of tired of it. But then, like, you know, these women, I mean, I'm, I'm back in, you know? Let, let, and let's just jump right into this episode. All right. So we're right at the aftermath of Melissa and Teresa and the Joes, everyone making up all nice and happy and. Coming in here at this episode, it's, you know, we see Melissa and Joe um, at the beginning of the episode talking a little bit about their sizzle tan billboard. Mm -hmm. And, um, what, okay, well, I guess let's just start talking about the, the sizzle tan. What do, what do you think of that? Well, my favorite part of the episode was Teresa's commercial that they, like, slid <laughs> in there. That you could tell, like, they, they either, like, ripped it from the web or... Or they just like shot it like really like shoddy, you know. Yeah. It just wasn't very good. But like it reminded me of like Teresa season one where she was like you know kind of like a little doll almost. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got a kick out of that. I think it's interesting. I mean, of course, it's a tanning salon. It's yeah. in New Jersey, so it's very appropriate. I, I find it very appropriate. Yeah, it, it, I have to say that the actual photo shoot and the billboard itself, in my opinion, was a little cheesy. Uh, but I guess what do you expect from a tanning salon? Yeah. Well, they had this other model come in, and, and yeah, she was hot. But I was trying to figure out, like, how are they going to have him and this model, like, take a picture together for this billboard and not make it sexual? Because clearly he's married, you know, they're using his star power so people know who he is. And so, like, they're having this, like, this hot chick come in, and they ended up not using her at all. So you wonder if that was even in the plans. Yeah, well... It it could even be the case too, where they had the billboard, but maybe there was other types of advertising that they use with him and the model, or some yeah, maybe like in the store, or pamphlet press. or exactly, something. Yeah, yeah. Make, it looks like he's like the new face of of Sizzle Tan, yeah. and Melissa didn't want to do it because you know, according to her, she's like, well, if I do it, then Teresa might look at it like I'm, you know, we're it's, we're trying to copy her. Or well, whatever. she made it very clear that she didn't want to do it because she didn't want to copy Teresa, and she made it very clear again, like she really made mm -hmm. like, drove that point home because she just wants. I feel like, and th this is kind of an opportunity for her to really just say if it, it can never come back to haunt her, like that she can't say anything. She did the right thing, and she's trying to show, like you know, that Teresa can't have ammo against her. And in a way, it's a little passive aggressive, I think. Yeah. I, what do you think? Do you think she should have done it? Um, I think it was fine that she didn't. In in some ways, it was it was okay. And, you know, Teresa could have gone back and said, oh, yeah, of course Melissa wants to do it because I am. Instead, Teresa, e Melissa didn't give any ammo to Teresa to mm -hmm. say that. Teresa was like, oh, my little brother. Oh, they want to keep in the family. So yeah. it, was, it was positive. And I, I think it was fine that Melissa wasn't in it. But I can already hear now at the reunion when a question comes up, and they're like, oh, well, look, Teresa, what did you think of her not doing it? And she'll be like, well, I think, you know, um, she's like, she'll like spin it in a certain way. Well, I mean, already, sure. and it, it, the, you know, cat out of the bag where Melissa said I didn't want to do it for the sole reason that Teresa's going to think I'm copying her. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, Teresa will just deny it, and she'll make Melissa feel like she was inadequate for not doing it. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, the girl can't win. I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily on Team Melissa, but we, we can get into this later. It goes either way. Either um, way. I, okay, I want to ask you for a guy's perspective, because during the film, um, not filming, during the photo shoot, Joe, Joe saw, Joey saw the girl come out and super hot and he's like you know i have my filet but once in a while i need a hot dog a dirty dog and i think is is that what he's calling the model a hot dog a dirty dog? like i mean how did you interpret that kind of went over my head a little oh, bit did it? i was kind of oh. like wait what because uh, if what he ha- if what he's know. saying is what i'm referring to it's like ooh, it just wasn't very nice to the model like for him to say like oh i don't know i need something dirty i need to look at not that he's calling her dirty right. but saying like oh i want it's nice to have something on the I don't know. Okay, I, I, I kind of see what you're saying now. I mean, it's just, I mean, first of all, it's not professional. No. Do, I don't expect much less. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I, just, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I thought it was it, pretty uh, derogatory to, it, to, it, it to the model. Yeah, it and, wasn't appropriate. No, and if I were her, I'd be like, oh, God, like, who is this creep? Uh, yeah. Really? You <laughs> yeah. know, I'm, I'm here, I'm a model, I'm doing my job, and okay. Right. But i just curious what, what you thought of that. But, so, all right, so then um, kind of... Uh, in that same vein, Melissa has her photo shoot of her book. Yeah, and she's got all this wind in her staircase. <laughs> it was really ridiculous. So they really need to have that with that big wind machine. I well, mean, she was inside she of her own house that America's pretty. seen. No, she looks good, but... I mean, you know, a lot of people, the people who are going to buy that book are viewers of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. And so they feel like they've been in her house, and there she is, like, all this, like, when it's just, she's not in a studio where you can kind of suspend your disbelief. I mean, I don't know, to me it was just a little over the top, but she did look good. Mm -hmm. And because I've seen the cover of that book so many times, I don't own it, but I've seen it so many times, when she came down the staircase in that outfit, I feel like I saw it, like, a million times. It's like, oh, here's this outfit now. Well, now we got to see the behind the scenes and and her wanting more wins. Now, uh, now, what do you think of this book? Uh, a side note what do you think of it well i don't know if you saw it but they did release the first chapter this week um well, i've not the, read it no. yeah <laughs> uh check it out um i read you know kind of snippets here and there and i don't know i think it's 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 her attempt to monop you know monopolize on being a housewife and yep. i would think what you know what's going on she had the music thing that doesn't seem to really have panned out that well. Well, she was uh, on the East Coast um, doing some performances. At Sh- I can't remember where, but it, I know it, she was at Shrine at um, Foxwoods Resort mm-hmm. and Casino in Connecticut. And so I, mean, I think yeah, she's she was staying that along. This past week, right? right and yeah. it was the same day where the with Teresa and, and Juicy. Oh, were, right. and It was that same day, supposedly. I think she but got the news broke. Yeah. Oh. We so, have a lot to say about that coming up. Yeah, so I mean, I, my opinion is like, you know, like all the other housewives are, she's monopolizing on being um, on the show. And the book itself, I think it's kind of cheesy, like really like, oh, married advice. Everyone asks me how we keep things so spicy. It's like, I don't know. Right. She's I mean, the kind of person that I would go for for marriage advice. Yeah, but. I mean, it, it's not a creative read, so it's not no. like a super interesting read. At the same time, it's not like, anything really useful that you're going to learn anything out of. And I mean, it's interesting because Teresa's books, if you want to cook, <laughs> you enjoy that, you there, can get something out of it. Yeah, there's like a purpose behind it. I mean, I guess Melissa's purpose is like you need help in your marriage, but if you really need help in the marriage, you probably should go to some, you know, yeah, some kind of yeah. a professional. For <laughs> I know, it's, I think it's more of a novelty <laughs> than anything so else. But I, I'd like to see her do something else. We've got, you know, even Caroline, she has her book and, and, and Kathy, isn't she working on something as well? Yeah, like, she has, uh, well, she has her cannolis mm-hmm, um, that she's doing. But she book. also has, she a, have a book she has a dessert. Process. She has like a dessert cookbook right, that's in yeah. the works that she's working on. So, uh. all right. Well, you know, Melissa's got her way of, of, of kind of making money, I guess. Yeah. But, all right. So, you know, stay with Melissa and Joey. They have their family dinner with Teresa and Juicy. So very now, traditional very Jersey traditional. Sunday. And I just wanted to point out that I just think the kids are so adorable. All of them are so cute. They I mean, really are. The, the I mean, Melissa and Joe's kids are their boys are so adorable so cute super cute and mm-hmm. Teresa's daughters are all adorable and it was nice to see them all together and the cousins and you really do you do feel bad for the kids I mean at the end of the day what really gets affected are the children and and they're so excited to see one another and it's just it was nice to see that yeah no I agree Except when we were in the kitchen, and then uh, Melissa had to give a little warning. Ooh, a little jab. A little warning. She said, um, keep being a good little girl. Ooh. Keep being a good little girl. Like, 
this is my problem with Melissa because for us two seasons she was on I'm not saying she was the victim but she definitely was more of the um you know she claimed that you know Teresa she like she showed and tell told she showed and told different things she would like explain thing, things that Teresa would do in the past and Teresa would say and do things in the current season it would be like oh I see where you're coming from mm -hmm. and now in this third season like many of these housewife franchises you really can't like hide so much about who you really are and so I feel like you know with any type of relationship problems it, it takes two people to have a relationship and so now we're really seeing more of her and and this is i think a, a true shade of melissa yeah and i i've said this before too it's you know the the producers see they they present what what they want us to see the viewers of course and so in some ways it's like i always feel that they're trying to spin things in a certain direction and it was definitely more in melissa's favor the last mm -hmm. couple seasons and you know, I don't think necessarily Melissa had acted any differently the last couple seasons. And in fact, maybe she's even let her guard down even more now because she was used to being portrayed in a positive way. But, yeah. you know, the, the producers choose and pick what they want us to see. And I and I think that they're they're spinning it more now with Melissa being mm -hmm. more of, you know, right. the bad guy, I guess. And and yeah, her colors are, are coming out. And, and she said, she said, don't you want this for our children? It'll be a good yeah. little girl, and it's like, oh, mm. like, and Teresa's just like, all right. It's know. so unnecessary because it's still like a scab, you know. Mm -hmm. Like they just dealt with it. They had, they sat down with Doctor V for five minutes. Uh, I still have a problem <laughs> with that. I mean, literally, it was like five minutes, and now they're all cured or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, um, so like they did that whole sequ and then the very next episode. There they are having this great dinner, and it's just like, I mean, don't pick at a scab, but just, you know, stop bleeding. Yeah, like, leave it alone. It, let it heal for a little bit. I mean, bit. it's just that comment is just not necessary. I mean, if anything, they should be celebrating how, how like, comfortable they are around each other after all this time. Mm -hmm. If you're going to even, like, go there, you know, if you're going to acknowledge. I wouldn't even acknowledge it. I wouldn't either. I mean, like, why throw, why why put any negativity at all? Like, yeah. why, why add salt to the wound? Like, just why right. do that? I, I don't know. I agree with you there. And it on one other note, I think it was Melissa that, that asked it, like, oh, you know, I think she was wondering where the parents were at. I said, oh, aren't they going to come? Mm -hmm. and, and Teresa's like, no, I think, right, I think it'd be just too much to throw them into this, or the mother, because I think, you know, the father's sick, but um, she didn't want them there. Well, you know what it is? I think, their par I think her parents really avoid the cameras, yeah. and I, especially the father, I don't believe he wants anything to do with the show, even though they, I know that he did make an appearance, I believe, two episodes ago, or maybe three, uh, but that was the first time since the very beginning of the series. So I feel that in this case, they really just didn't want to get involved. Oh, I yeah, I know for a fact. And I'm, yeah, yeah, I don't I, blame them. I don't blame them either. And I think that if I were Teresa and you know and Joey, I would want my parents not a part of it at all. Yeah, especially with the 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 drama between the two of them. So, yeah, I mean, it was other than, than that little job. I mean, there was, you know, it was a nice little dinner. The other thing I think that was really funny was uh, when Melissa said, oh, give me some more wine. I'm like such a lush lately. And Teresa's face was just classic <laughs> Teresa. It was, it was hilarious. But anyway, so um, moving on to um, the Caroline and her kids. Mm -hmm. And kind of now they're making this a storyline with – I'll be being super serious and maybe, you know, acting a lot like his father and, you know, his work ethic and everything. What did right. you think about that? Well, I can kind of relate to Albie in a way mm -hmm. because for a long time, whenever I really talked to my parents, it was always about careers and jobs and things like that. Yeah. And like certain family members as well. And it ended up with just being like, you you know, you, you go, he was going for a dinner or, or whatever he was going to the apartment for to hang out with his family. And then you just get into this big discussion about careers and jobs. And, you know, especially being a young person in their 20s, you're always wondering if, like, what you're doing is enough, if you're on the right path with what you should be doing, is there going to be a payoff? And so I can really relate to him in a certain way, especially he with him being that type of guy who, like, you know, he has to – he feels a lot of pressure that things fall on him and well he's the oldest yeah and i understand that too right i'm the oldest too. yeah so I, I can understand i i think it actually was really relatable and i liked the scene and i think caroline's a good mom so yeah. it was interesting and i like how she was like you know like where are you mom and dad we're not caroline and albert so don't worry about caroline and albert yeah and i thought that was a good line especially for too, kids actually, yeah. you know and well I, so you know with with albie and chris 
they have I mean they're two big ventures like have BLK the water company and you know opening up a restaurant that's not easy to do no. for it you know and I'm, I'm I'm assuming obviously opening the restaurant they probably have a lot of help from their parents they probably got funded by their parents and you know the they're, you know, Al owns the Brownstone. So they have a lot of that experience there. So it's not like somebody going in there on their own, completely on their own from scratch. But at the same time, those are huge endeavors. And for someone that young to be taking up two businesses like that, it's, it is a mm. lot of stress. It is a lot of pressure. And I don't know. I don't know why. They, I, I mean, they, they had the BLK. It seems like that's really just not going well. It was just a bad yeah. investment. And I think um, supposedly when you read all the blogs, you read stuff that's out there, you know, Chris... Uh, you know uh, Caroline's brother uh, he invested a lot of money in BLK and I guess it's just mm -hmm. not panning out the way that they had hoped it to so I don't know but now I'm looking at it, they opening up a restaurant to just now sink more funds into another business that might not fail and maybe that's why maybe that's why Al um, that's why Albie is is under so much pressure because BLK probably didn't do as well as they it admired. could have something to do with it because they do mm -hmm. kind of keep the success of blk whether it was or wasn't like underneath yeah like, low they stay they don't really comment too much about that but uh, i mean I, we all we were here before with Lori with Caface, yeah. and you know it was like oh am i going to be able to do this is this going to be a success and they had to like redo the restaurant and i mean not the restaurant excuse me the, the, makeup the, store, the yeah, yeah the store and and now it's doing well and so i feel like it's just kind of like a beat they have to play like is this going to work is this going to work but, i mean they've got the power of the Real Housewives in New Jersey it's on their side. Huge. If these were two guys that were just opening up a restaurant because their dad had one, I'd be a little concerned. Yeah. But I mean, in the tri-state area and people that come visit and the, the hardcore viewers of this show, I'm sure that it's doing fine. Yeah. I'm sure I, it's long opened you, <laughs> by you, now. You would you would think, and I think that makes more sense than a the water line to be okay. I actually see it at my Whole Foods. And I've never bought it. Oh yeah. I'm a fan of, well, the, right. the idea of black water kind of grosses me out too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like the concept itself. I I didn't get it when I first saw it, but it, it does make more sense for them to maybe open up a rush on something more local because those you know local fans, or whatever. I don't know. I I, right. I I wish them success in this. I hope right, I hope yeah. it pans out. I, I have a feeling it will, and I mean, these things might not last forever, but like I said, they got the power of the show on their side, so if you're going to open up a restaurant, you're going to be, you know, connected to the Real Housewives of New Jersey, now's the time while it's still hot. Yeah, I know, strike so. while the iron's hot. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, another thing during that scene that I thought interesting and want to get your opinion on is how Albie reacted to Caroline talking, I'm sorry, how Al reacted to Caroline talking to Albie, and Albie... Al basically saying, um, you know, I don't want to get. He, what he said is like basically what he was saying is like, I I I don't want him to get his balls busted because he's works hard and he's you know dedicated to his career, and mm -hmm. you really saw Al react strongly to Caroline talking to Albie about that. And kind of saying, you know, relax a little bit. And it was a very strong reaction by, mm -hmm. you by Al. Yeah, especially because you feel like the, the two sons always are like, you know, more trying not to impress the father, but the, the pressure, the father has a lot of pressure put on the kids. I, that's what I get from yeah. it. Like he's kind of like a little bit more of a, you know, distant father just because of the way he had to work and things like that. So like these are kids that like really, you know, want to really – uh, not impressed, but really do like do their father proud. And so I thought that it was going to be the opposite where like Caroline would be the one trying to like ease off and like, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of let you guys do your thing. So I thought it was a lot. Odd... Well, I always feel that with with Al, it's like he was getting mad at Caroline for doing to Albie what Caroline does to Al. And you know, basically saying like, you know, you work too hard, you mm -hmm. spend, you, you know, you, you're, you're too dedicated to your career. And I feel like part of the fight that Al and Caroline have is that, is the fact that Al's never there and Caroline's like, you know, you work too hard, this and that. I so it's almost as if she, he was taking it out on Caroline, um, I'll, I'll take it out on her, kind of the situation between him and Caroline and kind of deflecting here on this situation between Caroline and, and Albie. So I see what you mean, like a little foreshadowing. Yeah, that's what you mean. Yes, right. Yeah, and, and he got he, and he was angry, and he shows some anger. Usually, you see, I'll be, um, I'll just 
chilling back, kind of being in the, the shadows, mm-hmm. but he really made a point then and there, and then Caroline responded, just didn't say anything, looked at him, and you could tell it was like, ugh. And something's up with them, yeah. because they had this discussion about um, Caroline, you know, basically defending her time with Al and how they were fine, not to worry about things, but we were never really led to believe that there was really anything going on. So this was kind of like a, a check one, two, like, you know, what's... What, what are they talking about like this what's coming up here why are they saying this and of course if you look at the previews and and this season on the real housewives in jersey like you can see that there's something going to be revealed and there's things between them are coming up but um it was just kind of like a little kind of caught me off guard but they're definitely setting up for something so something to look forward to yeah i almost feel like with these two with with caroline and this storyline i think it's always been an issue between her and her husband the fact that he works a lot the fact that they only see each other once a week that's always been part of her life and probably always part of her story per se but i almost feel like because nothing else is really going on that now they're choosing to focus on that Mm -hmm. and so and then also you know her kids more but i feel like i don't know i don't know if something necessarily actually happens or it's more the fact that they're just choosing to show this part of of her storyline speaking of not much really happening let's talk about kathy (laughs) (laughs) what's there to talk about well seriously well it's rosie's more of her storyline i know well kathy's very lucky that Mm -hmm. she's related to these crazy people because she would have never made it onto the show i mean (laughs) i think she's a nicely i'm sure she's a very lovely person i'm sure her cannolis are fabulous and check them out and all that but i mean um i just i don't understand why she's really here she's not really she doesn't really live that lifestyle of the rich and fabulous that mm. are the Real Housewives. Like if you look at like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and the, the lifestyle. Well, you those can't even have. compare their Housewives of Beverly Hills to, to the Jersey. I, I mean, know, but I'm saying I know. But if the whole thing of these Housewives is supposed to be like you know look, it's, it's looking, looking into, into, that, into the lifestyle yeah. of yeah of the rich and, and picking it apart. Like I mean you know Kathy lives in a house much like how I grew up. You know you know very fortunate still. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it was um you know if it's like of the status of you know the Housewives per se. I don't know, but then you can look at someone like Danielle, and her house was big, and it was worth a lot, according to her, but it was, like, falling apart. Yeah. So, who knows? I don't know if I'm not really necessarily picking on homes, but she just really doesn't bring it like the housewives should. Yeah, I think it's more about, not so much the homes, because, I mean, when you think about homes, you look at Melissa's and and, uh, Joe's home, and supposedly that's, like, a whole facade, that home. So, you know, and so I think with Kathy, yeah, she just doesn't bring that much to the storyline when it comes to all the drama and everything and and maybe no. they had her on the show initially because they you know you know rich rich does say in you know random crass things sometimes maybe that that but by bring a comedic element to it her kids are adorable but it doesn't look like they're much part of it either anymore so i don't know no, yeah. and, and and luckily she has rosie because right. otherwise yeah no one would really care yeah i mean she should just be like a friend of the housewives yeah. the cousin you know it's i mean it's okay we don't need to have her on in the, in the opening <laughs> unless, i mean my opinion on this whole season was especially after last year's reunion, that they really need to introduce someone new, someone yeah. that was kind of on, like, Team Jackal in a little bit. So that way they could, like, you know, Balance be a perfect opportunity to kind of bring someone in within the craziness, but also allow for, you know, the show to be able to be eventually move in a different direction. I mean, now, you know... I agree. I think it needs really to be... We're stuck. In a, we're stuck mm-hmm. because it's like... Melissa and Teresa and Teresa and her brother, it's like fighting back and forth, yep. making up and fighting, fighting and making up, fighting. Oh, Twitter gets in the way and then they fight again. And it's, it. it's just like a, yeah. it's like a vicious cycle and then we're all getting sucked into right. it. And then, and then, you know, Jacqueline, this whole fight too. So at some point it does need like a fresh, which yes. I think is probably going to happen this next season with Teresa, the possibility of Teresa going to jail. So I know. Well, it'll be interesting. They base the whole show around her relationships. And yeah. it's like Teresa of New Jersey. I mean, well, so, now it is. That's not how it first started. I know. And this show's really made quite an evolution. It has. And, and I'm almost wondering, and what do you think? Because I really gave this some thought. I'm wondering <laughs> if, like, you know, if you really look at, if you've watched other housewives, and I'm sure you have, and, and you look at it, and you wonder, in general, to everyone I'm speaking to, <laughs> if you look at this show, you wonder if it really is, like, almost the Real Housewives franchise versus it almost feels like, to me, like a spinoff. Like, you know, they have the spinoffs of, like, Kim Zolciak has her show, and yeah. it's, like, more focused around, like that particular like alumni housewife and so that's really how i feel when it comes to this show of course there are shades of other storylines you know caroline's still there and, and things are happening but it's really like Teresa of new jersey it is and i think it's just because Teresa gives good tv 
I mean, it, yeah. when it really boils down to it, well, she she's got just, that long-term contract too. Well, so. she has no choice but to be there. But I mean, just yeah. you know, just that's what people are finding interesting, and that's the direction that they're going in. And really, what is going on in the lives of Caroline and uh, Kathy that are so fascinating mm -hmm. for us to tune in? Well, not, like you were saying, we need to balance it out. We do, and, and I, I think they need to bring, they need to, they need, they, they need to freshen right. up the show. And, bring and, and I'm not talking about Kim D. Like I, no. I mean, someone like new. Like I loved Kim G. Yeah. She was like, you liked her? yeah, I did. Cause she was a classic shit stir and I love that. <laughs> but I mean, she's, I don't know. I mean, we don't need to go back to that. I mean, if Danielle was still around, like I mean, maybe would have some relevance, but that's yeah. like, that's kind of past, but we need someone fresh that we've never really heard of. And Not you know, someone's sister or cousin or, you know, just someone new. Like totally brand new. A new I last know. name, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. someone fresh. Not related. Cause it yeah. also gets to be really deep and ugly when they are related. Like some of these issues just become, I mean, I guess yeah. that's what makes well, this show is People based around in. family. It now. is, and then and, it becomes you know, it just becomes very deep, very ugly, right. very fast. I can see where they're going. It's about family. That uh, that's a big part of New, uh, New Jersey, Jersey, a big part of the Italian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's really how this show was based in the beginning. But you know, in the first season, they were going out like they went to like Atlantic City for a weekend and they went shopping. It was just a lot more like I'm I'm glad that it's you know this is more drama than that. I don't need to see people going shopping at like casinos. Yeah, but. I mean, I don't, it's just I want a different aspect to it. Yeah. I do like the show, but I could, it could use some freshening up. And I think a lot of like the fans or a lot of our viewers of our show, you know, and making their comments and everything, a lot of them say the same thing. A lot of them are like, "Bring Danielle back." <laughs> well, I am gonna get on that train. I've been saying that forever. <laughs> Danielle needs to be on the show because it all goes back, back to, to her. her. It, it does. all does. And some people will argue with me and they'll say, "Well, not really," because she's been off for a while. But she starts. She planted that seed when mm -hmm. she brought up that kid's that your his the nephew. <laughs> At the reunion and ever since then they've been riding on that one moment and so now it's time to really like either i i heard she's supposed to make some type of an appearance towards the end of the season i don't know i mean i would only hope i just don't want to be disappointed and let down if she does it because yeah. it, she needs to go on like once they address everything with one another and you know jacqueline's back friends with you know Teresa, whatever happens they need to go back to like the root of that problem and that is danielle stop yeah i i wouldn't say she's a root of like all the problem not the family problems the brother the sister but, yeah but there she definitely it had a little storyline wise mm -hmm. if you look at how the story is mapped out on the show like if we you should, follow it we back, should draw like a whole map yeah, I almost to be like a family back. tree of like the housewives from like the first episode right. and, and everything all right so let's let's talk back to this episode kathy. so we're done wrapping up with oh oh that's right we're yeah. talking about kathy and rosie, and rosie. And, you know she had her uh, moment kind of dating or going to that yeah. that nightclub i give her a lot of credit because i wouldn't want to be like cruising and have my family over my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> and then like two or three cameramen and a producer in a van like following me like dating and talking to like the only two lesbians in a bar i mean you know really it was a, it was a lesbian bar yeah, but only like two people were there that were actually like lesbians. Because she, remember she was going through, they were like either too young or they were like bi curious. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just it didn't just seem awkward. like a hot spot. I mean, it was you know. It was super know. awkward to watch, and it was like, Ugh. and I, honestly, like I can't see how Rosie would really that have. Find, I have a hard time finding somebody, especially now with a little bit more publicity on the show. Yeah, I mean, she's been I'm on sure, for like two seasons, yeah, and now this is the third. She's a really popular person on the show. People really like her. I yeah. find it hard to find that she can't find someone, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's. I wasn't it's like tough. I wasn't liking her shirt. She kind of looked like a gay man of the seventies with her. It was like a weird print shirt. Like not feeling her, no, her style, she, no, her fashion. She, no, I mean, in the, it, she always looks good when she's doing her confessional. She uh -huh. always does. But I mean, you know, I I just I I don't know why she would go out in that outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe instead of having her whole family there helping her find someone, they should have helped her get dressed. <laughs> I know, right? I know Melissa was there. Melissa can like, you know, she can pull it together yeah. for her. Come on. Yeah, I know. I mean, Kathy too. Kathy, you know. Well, anyway, so now to the real heart of this episode. The sit down between Jacqueline and Teresa, and then throughout the episode, we see, you know, it leading up to this. We've got the the, the phone call, of, you know, Teresa wanting to, you know, make that appointment with Jacqueline and all that stuff, and Caroline giving her two cents on it. And now it said, oh wait, we got we got a caller real quick. Hello. Welcome Let's to the show. It. You're on live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Tasha from Brooklyn. What was your name? Tasha from Brooklyn. Tasha, hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. So, well, what do you got to say? I got to say that I am really disappointed in Teresa. I just, I mean, I'm not her biggest fan. I've never been really on her side after 
I don't believe Jacqueline set her up and all that. And with last week with Melissa, I understand where Melissa was coming from because they tried so hard, so they were just done. So I understand. I just don't know. I'm just really disappointed in Teresa. And it doesn't seem like she's made any breakthroughs. Even with the help of Dr. V. And her children are just becoming like her. They definitely do mirror her, the mother, quite a bit. I, I don't know if she's made too much progress either. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, with Dr. V, they were really together for five minutes. I wonder really, like you mentioned, how much progress, if any, was made. Um, and I, the whole situation with uh, with Jacqueline, I, I'm not sure. I don't. I really don't know how much on both sides is too genuine. What do you think? I'm going to have to side with Jacqueline because I find that um, Jacqueline will tell you what's up and up in her business. And Teresa, as we see from her indictment charges, you know, I keep too shady for words. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, after, I mean, that's what everyone's yeah. saying too. Like when you go on Twitter and the charges and everything against the two of them, it's like, how can you believe a word that comes out of their mouth when they're charged with these kind of things? Like if someone's willing to lie in that grand mm -hmm. scheme, you look at this and this almost seems like so just inconsequential co compared to like just the hugeness that's going on in, in their, their yeah. life right now and, I mean, and what when, they've done. When the charges were announced. Uh, I went on all of the, the Housewives Twitter <laughs> accounts and everyone was silent except Dina. Dina was like, you know, giving like love and, yeah. and all of that. But I mean, beyond that, like, yeah, every, everyone just kind of like shut down. Maybe you have a point. Maybe everyone was just kind of like, whoa, like who is this person after all? Like I really thought like, no, I think I, don't know. I, 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 I think most of the people know and, and the women know and everyone there on the show has an idea. And, and you don't think anyone know. was surprised? Um, I, I, I wouldn't think so. No, no. Uh, I, I think maybe. I mean, I'm, I, I, and you were referring to the, the women on the show, right? I mean, yeah. Were you referring? Yeah. No, I don't think so. They're all they're all family. They all live in the area. I think they all know what's up. I mean, maybe they were surprised at how how much, you know, what they got charged for. But I don't I don't mm -hmm. think it, it was like a, sh a shock. All right. What about you? Do you think that anyone was surprised? I no, I don't think anyone was surprised. I think they were like, you know, with everything, it kind of makes sense. That mm -hmm. the, I guess they were just so, like I have to agree with how much when you like read thirty nine indictments and then you find out you know deported fifty years in jail on top <laughs> of the bi the thing you're like that is a lot to keep hidden and to keep up the facade of what she was living this life. And it's like, if you can do this, then I think you did everything with your brother and you're trying to blame, shift blame onto other people. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, if they're willing to do that, what 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 aren't they willing to do? That's it's why weird, it's hard because now they're real criminals. Yeah, and it, you know? it, they're real exactly, and I it mean, brings into question almost everything, everything that's said and done. And I'm not saying that. You know that makes Melissa and, and Joey like the good guys here. You know, and then the bad guys. To be quite honest, I think they're all I crazy, and they all. And it's like we're watching a circus right now. Mm -hmm. We're watching one circus animal against another circus animal, and and then all their little fights back and forth. And sometimes some are right, sometimes the others right. And and we're and I I don't mm -hmm. know. It's just crazy. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah, for me it's like who do you who. They're all bad, but who is the worst of the worst? <laughs> yeah. Who do you trust? <laughs> yeah, I know. And, who do you trust? And it, and it has to be Teresa. And first of all, even with his good thing with Dr. V and people were praising him, I was like, no. He's still, no. I just still don't like him. Aww. Right. I liked it on the now, episode. Are you, are you kind of in the middle? Are you? You know, I don't believe for what I'm getting from you that you're really on any side. I think you just think everyone's crazy, right? <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to side with Jacqueline, even though she's kind of crazy. I'm gonna have to side with Jacqueline and Melissa. And when you, it's just after everything comes out, then it's like, and it's like holding up a mirror to the person and being like, "You see, we told you, you don't know who this person is. This is what we live with." I mean, mm -hmm. I know. Well. Everything's yeah. All right. We got to thank you so much for your for your call yeah, and for great in. comments and great insight. We love it when you guys call in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have All a good right. night in Brooklyn. Bye. Bye. Yeah, Bye. It's, it's late over there. Um, well, not then. I love the calls. I love that you take calls some other shows and that I, I haven't didn't take calls. So I love that. It's um, great. Oh, we love getting our callers and tweets and everything and interacting Fantastic. with the listeners. So, okay, let's talk about let's talk about the the sit down. Mm -hmm. 
So Jacqueline and Teresa finally come together. And I thought it was interesting that the men were involved. Yeah. They, you know? they all, they that all showed me up. Yeah. That, that they, the men sat down. And of course, just like men, two seconds, two they seconds. made up. Yeah. I, I knew water it. Water under the it. bridge. Yeah, water under the bridge. All right, let's, let's drink. Yeah, you know? yeah. And Chris was like, you know, I miss hanging out with Joe and I miss our relationship and what's, you know, what's done is done. Let can, bygones be bygones. You can tell Chris is just kind of like, I'll just overlook it. Like, you know, he, you can tell he knows the type of person that Juicy Joe is. Yeah. And just kind of like, whatever. Yeah. And, all right, but then now you got Teresa and Jacqueline. And so Teresa basically saying, you know, Jacqueline basically being upset at the fact that it's revealed that she was the fact that she overheard Teresa saying that she hated Jacqueline and they right. couldn't stand the side of her face. And supposedly that happened when they went on their Napa trip. Correct, yep. And... You know, so Jacqueline was upset about that, and Teresa's like, "Okay, so now you're upset about that, and and as a result, now you have to tear up my our whole family, and that yeah, and so and then Teresa's still accusing Jacqueline right. of breaking up the relationship because after that night at the posh, at the fashion show when Jacqueline said it was a setup, Teresa and Joey just never didn't talk again. right. And well, Teresa you... also held it against her about mentioning that her husband cheated on her. Yeah. So you kind of got to see like where Teresa's like mind was. was yeah and like how she like put all of these like ducks in a row towards <laughs> getting making Jacqueline the guilty party because like you wonder like what the hell outside of that fashion like wait what is, what is Teresa thinking that would automatically make her think that Jacqueline is like out to get her because mm -hmm. it was just really so ridiculous for me as a viewer at that time I was like what and so now I really see it made it clear to me about. too also because mm -hmm. I didn't understand too if like w why Jacqueline did tell Joey that Teresa set it up like mm -hmm. and if Teresa did in fact set her up the why did Jacqueline feel the need to be the one to tell him and why was she so upset at Teresa at the time because like we saw they had made up and things were good but look it turns out you know mm -hmm. she heard her talking bad about her and was upset about that so uh, how mad is production they didn't get that on camera I know because that's did like they, a so we didn't we didn't hear that no, right that's no. what I was trying to recall back right, and get no. new information so, so and so you know till Jacqueline was like you know when I heard that I was so upset because I thought we had just made up like what's going on we made up and we're putting the things behind us and now you turn around and telling Melissa I can't stand Jacqueline I can't stand her and so at that point, Jack was probably like, I don't know where to go from here with our relationship. But so then we see the whole fashion show and that whole thing that went down. Yeah. So I think that the issue here is that Jacqueline doesn't feel that Teresa is putting any responsibility, taking any responsibility for anything. And no. that is true to Teresa. Like she, always, doesn't, she doesn't ever take any responsibility. However, you know, at the same time, Teresa's upset with Jacqueline because Jacqueline you know goes below the belt according to Teresa she takes to Twitter and goes kind of crazy on Twitter so what do you think what do you think about all I that? thought it was really good that we got to really hear everything that Teresa saw and which how she perceived it mm -hmm. don't agree with all of it but like I can see how these like Twitter actions and, and the way she would come across you know with being evil as Teresa referred to her as like I can see like if you let someone get in your head, like they were good friends, so like she kind of spun it out of, definitely spun it out of control. Um, and then the whole deal with um, flashback to Jacqueline getting 800 pages faxed to her about Danielle, <laughs> 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 which I like Danielle, but even I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> but I mean, so I can see why she would feel that Jacqueline is just being a pain in the ass and she like like has a lot of free time on her hands to go digging. And But that's how, that's just Jacqueline. I think that's just her way is when she's, she's very loyal and mm -hmm. when someone like, I don't know, when someone goes against her or she, she's not trusting of somebody, she's yeah. going to do her work because she doesn't want to be made a fool of. And unfortunately, she even realizes that she attracts toxic people. And and so I think she's it's something she's trying to break, but yeah. it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Jacqueline kind of does like to, to, to dig around and poke around and like she goes online a lot and she's on Twitter a lot and she did do that whole thing with Danielle and... And, and she is, she does strike me as one of those people. And we're seeing, like we've said this about Melissa, even though Jacqueline's been there from the start, but we're seeing all these aspects of Jacqueline's personality come forward. Now, all these things, of, like the fact that she gets kind of crazy and, you know, she's drinking and she'll go off kind of batshit crazy on the phone and the weird things that she does and says mm -hmm. are, are, we're seeing a little bit more of that. But, 
she strikes me as the kind of person who's, you know, is a loyal person, a loyal friend. And she'd be that girl that would like sock somebody else for her friend. Mm-hmm. She'd be that kind of crazy girl, the one that'll like, well, let me go find out and dig up all the dish on her and, and do that. Right. And so she. Oh, we saw it in the flashbacks too. <laughs> and she was like, did you knock someone out the night millimeter gun? And so like, you could just tell like she loves to be armed with facts. With all that. Yeah. But what, what you know, I do feel that where Jacqueline does have a point is the fact that because I I do I don't like the whole idea like this whole Twitter thing I think I I find that annoying too like the yeah. fact that she goes with a belt she tweets all these awful things I just think that's awful and annoying and it just it just doesn't look good on on Jacqueline's part but where yeah. I do think Jacqueline has a point is that you know Teresa can't blame Jacqueline solely for the demise of her and her brother's relationship like there are issues there before and if. The fact that T- Jacqueline did say that, right? It's just all set up. Yeah. If it was just that that took, it, it was just that it only took that for Teresa and Joey not to talk for a year and a half. You know what I'm saying? Right. There had to have been in holes in the foundation in well, order and, for something like yeah. that to have such an effect. Well, she's on she's it. not gonna take credit for it. I mean, she's not gonna take the fault, the blame, the fall, whatever for that. Those well, things. Ter- yes. Yeah, well, you mean Teresa? Teresa. Yeah. Well, Teresa. Yeah. Teresa's not gonna take the. F- fall of the relationship i mean jacqueline did have a little bit part in it but teresa's just putting all the blame on jacqueline oh, right yeah i mean yeah she's not and she's not going to take any responsibility for the fact that oh we had no. some of an issue and... so it'll be interesting because we didn't see jacqueline's side of the things no it's so, gonna come next week yeah so i mean i almost feel like these two are just at a stalemate and that's how i felt at the end of last year's reunion with everybody mm-hmm. i just kind of i was like where do you even move to like what do you even do because no one was accepting like you know people you know except few people accepted blame for what they could but it all went back to Teresa, and she just didn't say anything and it's so, like where do you go on from there and i don't i really honestly don't see Teresa sitting down from jacqueline and being you know what i was an idiot i apologize and then being calling each other every day again. Like, I just don't see it happening. So I'm wondering, I mean, how do they, I, I figure, and you know, we know that eventually things will be patched mm-hmm. up or they'll be, you know, civil, but I mean, I, I don't I don't see Teresa like breaking down the way she did and just admitting anything. Well, yeah, I mean, what I think with, with Jacqueline, and I'm interested to see what happens next week, at the end of the episode, Teresa says like, how did I hurt you? Like, why would you go and say that I set, I set him mm-hmm. up? Especially if Teresa didn't, you know, say Teresa didn't set her up and Jacqueline made this up or say Teresa did a little bit and Jacqueline was in on it because they were friends and now Jacqueline turned on Teresa. I am interested to see why did Jacqueline do that? Why? Because up until now, I wasn't really clear why Jacqueline did that. You you, you had always yeah. thought that Jacqueline had Teresa's back. And why did Jacqueline turn on Teresa? Was it because she overheard Teresa saying, oh, I can't, I, I hate Jacqueline. Maybe that's the reason why. And so, I don't know. I'm interested to see how this second half of the dinner right. goes down. And, yeah. So. All right. All right. I think that kind of wraps up the episode, unless you have anything else to add about it. Uh, no, let's just get into some news and gossip, All right. Shall we? Yeah, there's a lot of news. TV news. Okay, so as most of you, I'm sure, already know, yes. on Monday, prosecutors announced that the Judiciaries, Jud- Jud- I can never <laughs> pronounce their last names, Judiciaries are facing 39 counts of fraud, including not reporting information to the IRS between 2001 and 2008. Charges include tax evasion and trying to get illegal mortgages and loans from banks. Joe allegedly failed to file income tax returns from 2004 to 2008. And when they filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in 2009, they allegedly didn't put down income from the Bravo show. On Tuesday of this week, they appeared in court, posting $500,000 bond each. They will be arraigned on August 14th and could face up to 50 years in prison. Yeah, I mean, it took a million dollars to get them out. It took a million dollars to get these two people out of prison. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these are some serious charges. This isn't really like, you know, uh, the... I mean, housewives have had, you know, lawsuits in the past, but I mean, no one's really been... I don't think anyone's been in front of a federal judge. No, this is, And this is <laughs> hardcore. I mean, like you said, these, this is... They're criminals. Yeah. I mean, this is... This is insane. And now, so it's... I, let me pose a question. 
Teresa doesn't. Teresa will just say that you know maybe some some things go over her head. She's you know not the most um, you know I, I don't think she'd be very financially savvy. Mm -hmm. um, and so they claim that a lot of things are like put in front of her and she just signed things. Do you think that Teresa has any clue that she has any wrongdoing here, or do you think she was just she knew what she was doing the whole time? What do you think? You know, I, it's that, tough. It is tough, and I, that's something I was thinking about. Like, does she? How much does she know? I don't think she knows everything, because I don't think Joe probably told everything. I mean, right. he was accused also of, of signing her signature a lot of times without oh. her knowing, and so I think there are parts of it that she didn't know, and maybe she knew. And I, I do believe she knew that there was wrongdoing. I don't believe she knew to the extent. I think she's so busy. They've got four girls. She's doing, you know, raising the girls. She's on the housewives. So I don't think she she knows. And I don't know if it's for the fact because it just went over her head or that Joe just kept it from her. Yeah. And I think he probably kept a lot from her. Probably. I don't know. I mean, they claim that she could be responsible yeah. too. Well, they, they they say that she, you know, they're they're accusing Teresa of falsely stating that she had a job as an executive assistant, um, right. making it possible for them to get like larger mortgages, and they also hid additional income Teresa was receiving from you know, from the housewives, mm -hmm. and. I don't well, know. I mean, it's bad because it's now really they're bad. saying they're going to use the show as evidence to oh. prove that they had a lifestyle of what, while they were, like, you know, applying for bankruptcy that they still, you know, they hit. I mean, the very first episode, she was telling us about her French chateau style house. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and then remember all the furniture that was purchased. Everything. I mean, she would just go out and th she was like, oh, I heard the banks crashing, so I buy everything with cash. And you saw the cash. I mean, that show, talk about like, that show gave her something and it could easily take everything away. Every, I remember the first few episodes when she went shopping. I think it was for Gia. And I don't know, it was like a crazy amount of money she spent at some like little baby boutique or something. And you saw them doing that a lot. You don't see her doing that at all this season. No. And you didn't really see it as much last season. And so, of course, now with all of this going on, everyone's asking, like, what's going on now with the Housewives of New Jersey? So, right. according to In Touch Weekly, Teresa will attend the taping of the Royal Housewives of New Jersey Season 5 reunion with the fellow, fellow cast members. She's obligated. That's our contract. So, okay. That doesn't really shock me. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess it's in the contract, but maybe there's something in the contract that says unless you're in jail or <laughs> unless you're like... Well, that's true. She could do a, a little Skype video yeah. cast. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, according to In Touch, Teresa has no plans to stop filming. The reunion will likely film in late August or early September. Bravo didn't return the Hunt Huntington Post request for comments. Um, however, according to In Touch, the ladies won't be able to discuss what's going on with the... Uh, with Teresa at the reunion because of the nature of her charges. Oh, um, so, no yeah, fun. that is no fun because yeah. everyone wants to know what's going on. Yeah, and, I mean, people are going to be watching for that. And following the court appearance, uh, Teresa had a uh, tweet. Thank you all so much for your love and support. It means the world to me and my family. Dan Dibachi, which is always what she signs off with. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've got. What do you got real quick? Okay, well, um, The View, a show that I absolutely hate, was talking a lot about The Real Housewives this week. It was, uh, I mean, their, their facts are always incorrect. They said from the former Real they said that they were going to have words from the former Real Housewives of New Jersey co-stars that were turning against the Judices. And they said that um, a lot of folks are turning, are speaking out, and this, that were on the show, and this is totally false. No one has. Um, one chick, I don't know if you remember this woman named Monica, and her husband. Mm -hmm. The attorney. Um, the attorney. Yeah, her yeah. husband sued Joe at one point. And so she's taking full credit for this whole this whole situation, debacle. yes, whole debacle. She's saying, um, oh, the work we put in to make sure the judge recognized they were committing fraud ultimately resulted in them withdrawing their petition and tipping off the feds. She explains, it's been a long road. It does feel good. Don't you remember Monica Ew. was the one that came to the Christmas party? And they kicked her out. And, and Melissa kicked her out yeah. and was like, oh, you know, I kicked her out because Teresa didn't want her and Teresa didn't want her there because obviously she was, Monica was the attorney. I mean, it feels good. This woman has four kids. And both her and her husband could be put away in federal oh. prison. Come on, it feels good. That's really disgusting. <laughs> eh, yeah, but if, they, if they're really, really doing what they they're 
if they're really doing that, that's illegal. I know. It's against the I law. Know, it's not I keep right to about do. That. I you keep know? thinking you're, about that. You're still, granted, you're on this television show. We're, we've gotten to really like you and your husband and your family. You have beautiful children. I like Teresa. I, I'm starting to like Juicy Joe. But these know. are crimes. <laughs> these are bad, yeah. bad crimes. No, and it's true. They're, they're, they're no joke. No, I they're mean, no it's joke. It's no slap on the wrist either. Mm-hmm. It's going to result. Well, current cast has remained very quiet, like I mentioned earlier, ex- excluding Kim D, who's in full support of Teresa and says that it's just been a witch hunt from the beginning. Well, I don't... I don't know. I mean, these are federal charges. I don't know if anyone's like a, just going after them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that goes with the same vein. It's like if you if you are committing crimes... You right. know, you're going to get, eventually, it's karma. Eventually, mm-hmm. things are going to happen, and you're going to get caught. Right. I always believe that. So, And oh, in yeah. some ways, this is so much worse to commit a crime in this way, in such a public way. And now they're going to use all the footage from the Bravo again. I mean, I mean it's, they've got four, is it four or five seasons now. Five seasons, right? This is season five. Yeah, season yeah, five. So, so that's like a lot. All right, and then lastly, um, Danielle Staub, who we mentioned earlier, could she be smarter than Teresa? Danielle was uh, in similar circumstances. She filed for bankruptcy in June of 2012. Uh, she hid. She claims that she hid cash in various um, areas and different variables uh, while she was filing. And um, TMZ says that she recently forked over $35,000 to settle her debts and not have any problems with the feds. So um, interesting well, yeah. that uh, Danielle, who's always seemed to be in a total financial yeah, mess, always. and Teresa was always the, like the one on top of the hill with Wearing all the money. Furs, yeah. Like, um, yeah, this one actually got out with no problem, unscathed. Yeah, I mean, being I have to just end the saying, like being a fan of Teresa, it is it is sad to see this. It's sad that they that they if they did commit these crimes. It's just sad that right. they committed them <laughs> you know I mean, it is it's, it's a terrible situation yeah. for all for the kids especially the kid, that's who i feel sorry for right. these children the right. four girls that not only are in the middle of this with this entire reality show dealing with the brother you know their uncle not being in their life their grandparents whatever but now this that those those are the real victims of this entire debacle exactly. are the kids Exactly. Like so. it'll be interesting to see what happens, but also I mean I just don't see it ending well. So it'll almost be kind of sad to see like where this goes. Like I mean, I don't know. I can't say I'm looking forward to seeing no. what happens. I think it'll definitely but... be a piece in like pop culture history for sure. Yeah. When you like ten years from now, when you go back and they're talking about oh reality TV blah blah blah, and I I guarantee yeah. this is gonna go up there mm-hmm. as like one of those points in reality TV history. So yep. anyways, we've we've got to wrap things up. I know we could talk forever and forever about There's all so this. So much to say. I but know. we'll just have to come back next week. Yes. So <laughs> where can we where can everyone find you? All right. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Grant Michael R. Oh, okay. Right. And I am your host, Erica Garcia Rojas. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at I am E G R. Thank you for you guys for all those comments. Keep on keep on leaving them go to itunes rate us five stars hopefully and till next week thank you so much for tuning in guys thank you from bing.com executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.